What's good, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave. Welcome to the Wave Report number 17, where I'm going to cover the entire lightweight division pretty much. Um, just go over the most recent news, which of course, Stevenson, Devin Haney, and all that. And then we're going to cover a little bit of fights that uh, occurred last week that I missed while I was on vacation. Okay, so I'm going to try to... I wrote a long list of topics. I'm going to try to not make it too long, all right? But I'm going to sweep through these topics, let me let you know what I think um, going forward. Um, before we get started, just want to let you guys know George Cambosos, he's going to be making his return this weekend against Maxi Hughes. This will be the first fight since he's lost to Devin Haney in, those, in both of those fights. So this is going to be his return to fight. It's going to be on the 22nd, and it's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. Okay. Um, also, in other news, uh, we got Tank Davis. He's out of jail now. And um, I'm not sure when we're going to see him back in the ring. I don't know if they have any talks on a potential opponent or anything like that. But he is out of jail. I don't know if he's free to fight yet. I don't know if he's still going to go back to having house arrest. I don't really know of all of that. But uh, just wanted to address that real quick. You know, we'll just wait to hear some news, some boxing related news, and then we'll we'll get back to Tank Davis. Okay. Um, also, Isaac Cruz, he's going to be making his return uh, next week on the Spence, uh, uh, the Spence Crawford undercard. Okay, against uh, Giovanni Cabrera. I was able to look up Cabrera. Never heard of him. Never seen him fight before. But I was able to look him up. There is some content on youtube uh with some of his fights and just trying to pick you know figure out you know who he is and how he fights and he he does got some um slickness to him you know what i mean i think he is not a big puncher he only has like seven knockouts i think when i look up his resume i think he had like 21 fights and seven knockouts something like that um so he's not a power puncher but he's a good mover he's a good boxer but you know, I just saw the chin. The chin is up there a little too much, you know. And a guy like Isaac Cruz that likes to come forward, gets press up on your chest, swing those really wide, wild shots, you know, looping shots. I can see Cabrera getting caught with a, a, a big, you know, like overhand right or left, you know. And, um, you know, I'm not going to do no breakdown on that fight, you know what I mean, but... I can see how he loses the fight against Isaac Cruz, all right? So we're doing all lightweight talk today, like I said. Um, but I want to go back on a few fights and give you... I, I mainly made this video for the the guys that are not as popular. The guys that people are talking about, but not the main key guys like Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, Lomachenko and stuff. I'm going to speak on them too, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some of these other fights. Uh I, I saw that I saw late when I got back home. Uh I saw I saw um Kid Austin's fight. Uh I, I also saw Edwin De Los Santos fight against Joseph Adorno. Um I did see Martin's Frank Martin's fight a couple of days after they I, I saw it on the night of the fight, but I only saw like the last four rounds. So I think I turned to it when they were in round nine. So I didn't watch the whole fight, but I, I eventually did watch it uh, yesterday morning or, or Sunday. I'm not sure, but whenever they had it up on Showtime for me to rewatch it, I did watch the fight. I'm going to speak on that. Um, I did watch Andy Cruz's fight, his debut, his professional debut. I did check that out. And then at some point, I'll get to a little bit about Shakur Stevenson and what's going on with the WBC and the WBO and him getting his shot against one of Devin Haney's titles. Okay, Devin Haney has a lot to think about um, for this upcoming fight. I mean, I've never seen a guy have so many options, you know, so many different directions. So we'll get to that at some point. All right. Um, but let's start out with uh, Floyd Schofield, uh, Kid Austin. Uh, he fought... Uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> he fought. He fought Hasco Rhodes. Uh, I think this was last week. Okay, and I, I, I just was, you know, wanted to check the fight out because 
I don't feel like enough people are talking about Kid Austin. And I think it's because it's a cluttered division. Uh, he's 20 years old, but he's he's getting his fights in. And he's looking like a beast. You know, he's stopping a majority of these guys. And um, no one talks about him. He's been, he's been calling out Keyshawn Davis heavy, okay, consistently. Um, he's not one of these young fighters that... Uh, are, are 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 with their father. You know, his father has been very vocal. Uh, he's done interviews with his father. All right, I've been watching him for some time now. Okay, good fighter, but he has a lot of. He's twenty years old, but he's getting his fights in. You know, I don't. Let me pull him up real quick. I don't know how many professional fights, but I'm gonna look it up and check right now how many pro fights he has so far. So he has 15 pro fights, 11 knockouts, no draws, no losses, okay? Very powerful, very explosive, you know, but he's 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 learning, you know, and um the fight against uh Rhodes, his most recent fight, you know, um it it went a lot longer than I remember some of his recent fights going. Uh he he went the distance with Mercado, okay? So this this fight against Rhodes he he went to ten rounds with this guy, and you know he had dropped Rhodes several times, hurt him several times in a fight, you know. And um, there was a period late in the fight, I'm not sure if it was the last round or maybe the round before the last round, where there was a nasty headbutt by Rhodes, all right, that gave uh, Kid Austin a, a nasty gash, like a really ugly cut. And uh, now at this point, Kid Austin is like winning all the rounds. You know what I mean? He's definitely up. The fight is almost over. And he gets up, right? Because Rhodes basically headbutt him, but he threw a right hand. It didn't land clean, but because of the headbutt, <clears throat> it's one of the worst headbutts I've seen in a while. Kid Austin went down from it, right? And it, <clears throat> excuse me, Tim. It wasn't scored a knockdown, but um, the 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 bat the cut was really bad, and Kid Austin gets up and he's like bleeding all over his face from that cut, and he like licks the blood, you know, like it's like crazy, like on some Bruce Lee shit, and um, you know, he finished the fight. He didn't get the stoppage, but it was pretty cool to see. You know, and I like this kid. I think he is a fighter that Keyshawn should be fighting. Okay. I know Keyshawn is going after Frank Martin and he's calling out all of these guys that's ahead of him. But I would love to see this fight. You know, I think Kit Austin, even though he's a, he's younger, um, he's had more pro fights. And I think he brings a lot more than some of the other fighters that Keyshawn has fought. And I would love to see that fight. You know, I don't think, you know, I know Keyshawn is much popular uh, because he's getting promoted much better. And I think he's in camp with the right people, being around Shakur, um, being around Jared Anderson and, and Terrence Bud Crawford. I think he's around the right people for sure. But these are the people that he should be fighting, you know. Um, I was just bringing up in my earlier video, David Adale, uh, he's going to be fighting or he's looking to get a shot at Fabio Wardley. And even though Wardley has been fighting better fighters so far in his per uh, professional career, these are still the proper fights to happen. You know, they're trying to make that British title fight. And I feel like these are the fights that should be happening. Uh, for these guys to get to the next level, you know, Floyd, Keyshawn, of course, obviously these guys are, are learning, but um, I like Floyd, you know, I like him, I like the way, you know, I mean, he's very humble, it seems like his dad do a lot of talking, I seen the interview, I didn't like the interview, uh, I forgot, it, it was, this his father started getting to threats, it was a recent, maybe a month or two ago, I, I thought his father was doing too much with the street shit and all that. I, I didn't like that, but, uh, you know, sometimes I think some of these fathers, uh, I like being that I liked, I do like the fact that they're in 
the the son's lives and, and part of the camp and, and and stuff i do like that but sometimes i think the fathers might get a little bit too involved i said this about tfimo lopez recently and his dad i think sometimes they get a little bit into the spotlight too much and i'm like you know what you i think as a dad you should probably be there to support your son you let your son talk you know let your son oh it was a Keyshawn davis interview where Keyshawn and the father was going back and forth let floyd speak you know what i mean and that's no disrespect to the father I'm, I'm glad he's there but i just don't take the spotlight from your son let let floyd speak for himself he's a grown man or he's a young man but he's a man he's the one that's getting in the ring and let him speak to Keyshawn. you know hopefully that fight somehow happens at some point because I, I like that and I like that they're, they're slowly becoming rivals. You know what I mean? Um, but, like, I like Floyd. You know, I like what he's doing. I think he's powerful. Um, I like the switching he was doing in the Rhodes fight, too. There was a point where, there was a point where, because he knocked down Rhodes a few times. And there was one of those later rounds where he he dropped Rhodes with a, with a body shot. But I like the way, like, he kind of trapped him. Like, he was setting him up. Like, he was walking backwards, and he was going righty to lefty. And then he, like, threw a shot to the body and hurt Rhodes from a southpaw, you know, as a southpaw. And I, he switched to southpaw. And I, I liked that. I liked how he set it up. You know what I mean? Obviously, Rhodes is, is not really on that level, you know. But it, it was still pretty cool to see, like, he... He has uh, some great talent, you know what I mean, and he he looks he looks like sometimes I I've seen him fight a lot, so sometimes I think he's a little overly aggressive. I think he needs to be a little bit more smart, more educated with his pressure. Sometimes I think he just doesn't use his jab a little too long, you know, and thinks he just leads with power shots too much, you know, and I think he leaves himself open a little bit, but um, he looks good, you know. He looks like he, you know, I love the angles. You know, uh, he's explosive, you know, very fast, powerful, strong. And um, he's at the right division. You know, I don't know how long he's going to be able to hang around because he looks real bulky at that division. Maybe it's just the way his body is. But um, hopefully he can stay around there because there's a lot of money at the division. And even if he doesn't, even if he can't, you know, all those guys at 135 is going to eventually move up to 140 anyway. You know what I mean? Um, but I like I like Floyd. You know, and um, I hope he continues winning. Uh, another fighter that I saw was Andy Cruz, his pro debut. This is the two-time Olympic gold medalist uh, from Cuba. He had his professional debut against Juan Carlos Burgos, who was recently in the ring with Keyshawn Davis. Uh, another rival of Keyshawn, at least is that Keyshawn has a lot of rivals. He has Frank Martin. He has Andy Cruz, who beat him four times in amateurs um and then he also has uh uh and he actually beat Keyshawn as Keyshawn was already pro uh, Keyshawn did go back and fight him once again uh after he became pro and and he was able to beat him again but this is an amateur fight when they fought uh Andy Cruz had his pro fight against uh, Juan Carlos Burgos and uh that's a pretty good fight to have as your professional debut and um, he's looking to waste no time. I've seen that he is with um, Jerome Boos and it's his uh, dad. is his coach. He's part of that camp. And um, he looked good. You know, I mean, he's a, this is another fighter that has phenomenal ability, phenomenal experience. Okay. Um, very athletic. You know what I mean? Can switch. Uh, explosive, but not really powerful. You know, I think that's the one thing. Uh, I I know there was some talk about like Eddie was saying something about possibly he wanted Andy to fight Keyshawn on his pro debut. <clears throat> it's not that <clears throat> it's not that I was against it because if they had it, I would have liked it. But I kind of wanted to see how Andy looked as a pro, uh, simply because. You know, sometimes these super amateurs like Lomachenko, they jump the, the gun a little too early. Um, I know he has a lot of experience as an amateur, but I still believe that turning pro is a little different. 
And you saw it with the lack of power in Andy Cruz. You win in all these amateur fights. It's, it's a lot of it is to do is because of how you're punching. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these punches are scoring shots as an amateur, but as a pro, they're not as effective. You know, and I think uh, Burgos is an extremely durable fighter. I mean, with all the losses that he has, he just hasn't been stopped. I thought Keyshawn looked better against Burgos. Does it mean that Keyshawn beats any now or anything like that? I, I really don't know. Um, but what I am saying that the pros. You know, it's a little tougher. You know, guys are hitting harder. And I kind of wanted to see, I want to see Andy de develop as a pro. Um, he looks good. He looks good. But there's a lot of good guys. The competition is much thicker. It's not like Andy hasn't lost amateur fights. You know what I mean? The competition is much thicker as a pro at 135. It's just way too much talent. It's way too many prospects. It's way too many top contenders, old dudes, new guys. It's all over the place. So with that being said, it was a good performance. It's just that there's so many people. I'm not sure who's really the best. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm not sure. All of these guys need to fight each other. And we're getting some fights at the, the, the highest level. But, um... You know what I mean? I, I just, when I see him, it's like, okay, he looks good. But he's in a division where everyone is at. So even though the performance was good against Burgos, and I know guys like Keyshawn and others is fighting at that level, it's like I still need more to see. I need to see a lot more because it's just too much talent right there in that division. It's way too much talent there. So it, it really didn't mean anything. It's like I saw it. It was a good performance, but I wasn't like, wow. You know, I it was no wow in what I saw. All right. But good win. Good professional debut. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, he won. And that's the most important thing. And he looked good winning. Um, but I wasn't like, wow. I was like, OK, he looks good. He looks good, but I want to see more, you know? I want to see more because there's a lot of these guys, and I'm going to bring a lot of them up in this is this here video. Um, The next guy that I want to bring up is Edward Edwin De Los Sotos, Santos. I'm sorry, Edwin De Los, De Los Santos. Uh, he fought Joseph Adorno last weekend, okay? And uh, this guy... Santos is good. Um, he's really good. Like I'm really, I'm really impressed with him. these last two wins. I, I, I've never seen him fight before the uh, Jose Venezuela fight, which was a, a a big upset. You know, um, that was my first time seeing him. But man, I like this guy. You know, I uh, let me pull him up real quick. I like Joseph Adorno. You know what I mean? So whenever he fights, I like to tune in. Uh, I like his fight. You know, I think he had a close one with Elvis Rodriguez recently. Um, you know, I liked his fight with, with for Michelle Rivera. I love this fight against Jermaine Ortiz. That's when I started really, like, paying attention to him. That was a draw. Uh, but, man, this guy, Edwin... Shut, he shut Joseph Adorno out. I mean, the guy is quick and powerful. You know, Santos is legit, man. And let me tell you something, man. I know we talk a lot, a lot of these young guys. Some of them I just named. I think Edwin beats some of them right now. You know, if not all. I mean, this is a top tier fighter in my opinion. You know, regardless of where he's ranked, the Dominican guy, he's only 23 years old. Um, he does have one uh, close decision loss. Um, split decision. Was it a split decision or a majority of decision against William Foster? Uh, but, man, this kid is good, man. He's good. He got 16 wins with 14 knockouts. The Venezuela win was was a knockout, third-round knockout. Destroyed him. All right. Um, got caught, too, but... Valenzuela was one of the top prospects, 
you know, and 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 the way Santos did it. And Valenzuela lost a controversial decision in his very next fight against Chris Colbert. But Chris Colbert didn't look like Santos in there. Santos, I am telling you, and I, I want to say it, you got to check out Edwin De Los Santos, man. I think he is better than a lot of these guys at Lightweight right now. Right now. Um, when I just said Andy Cruz, very good, impressive uh, performance against Burgos. When I see Santos, though, I'm like, wow. Like, this guy, reflexes, timing, countering, hand speed. Adorno, he made him look easy. Won a decision against a tough, rugged, good, technical fighter. Um, out of all those guys that Adorno's been in there with, Santos was the only one to make it look easy. All right? Beat him clear. All right? And we already saw what he did to Valenzuela. This is the guy to look out for at the 135 division. This guy here. All right. Out of all of these other guys, I like them. I like I like Martin. I like Schofield. I like Andy Cruz. You know, I, I like I like a lot of these fighters. But this guy Santos is a problem. So, you know. This is starting to look like my guy out of these younger guys on the come up. You know, he's another guy like I like Jermaine Ortiz, too. Jermaine Ortiz is another guy that I feel is overlooked. You know, I think his fight with Lomachenko could have gone either way. That was a very close fight. The, the, regardless of what the judges had it, I thought it was closer, much closer than the way they had it. So, you know, being on lookout for Santos. Um, he destroyed. He destroyed. Joseph Adorno. Made it look easy. So that's another guy that you got to look out for. All right. Um, all right. Now, let's let's talk about Frank Martin. All right. He had a, he had a tough fight with Artem Haratunian. All right. He had a tough fight. Both undefeated fighters. You know, Frank has been... He's had a nice little run. All right. I've seen... Haratunian fight before once. I can't remember what on the card, but I know when they announced his fight, I did go back and, and did like a little film study. I thought he was cool, but based off the run that Frank was having, excuse me, that he was having lately, you know, coming off of the uh, Michelle Rivera one win, and, and that was a big win simply because, you know, Michelle Rivera couldn't do nothing. He ain't had nothing for him. And even he, he, and he tested positive after that fight and lost. You know, um, I like that fight. I like the uh, Jackson Marino, Marina's uh, win. I like the Romero doing. So Frank has been coming off some of his best performances. He had one, he had a phenomenal year in 22, 22, uh, had three fights and had three stoppages. Uh, no, he didn't stop Michelle Rivera, but he knocked him down. All right. And um, he was going into this fight with Artem. And I felt like, you know, I didn't pay too much attention going into the fight because, you know, I seen what Frank did, did last year. And I felt like, you know, he should be able to take care of Artem. You know what I mean? And um, it was a very, very tough fight. You know, it took a while for Frank. The thing about Frank is he's very explosive. You know, my, I think it's safe to say that he's not the fastest starter. You know, I think he likes to, you know, and I know I know in the, the interviews, in a post-fight interview, he says something like, you know, I just couldn't get the timing right, you know. And I, I think he's very explosive. I think he's like a guy that wants to try to ambush you. You know, once he catches you with a good shot, he, then he wants to jump in and, and, and throw bombs and, and the combinations and, and I think that's the type of fighter he is, you know. But when Artem, Artem came out coming forward, being the aggressor. And one thing about Artem that I think Frank didn't like was those body shots. You know, Artem was coming forward. And no matter what Frank landed, Frank never really followed up with anything. So even though Frank landed some good shots, even some good body shots too, Artem kept coming forward, you know, and I don't think Frank really liked it. Um, you know, Artem was throwing some good combos, 
And I want to say the way I had it scored, I don't have the paper in front of me, but the way that I had it scored going into the 10th round, I had Arkham up six rounds to three. I gave Frank only three. You know, of course, he had that that huge six round. But I had Arkham. I thought Arkham was winning the fight clear going into the 10th, right? And then the 10th round happens and Frank went nuts. He went crazy. He had fought like a fighter that was desperate for a win and he needed a knockout. And I love that. And sometimes these fighters have to dig deep in order to secure a win. Not complain, not fall back, not pretend like they have the fight in the bag. I hate when fighters do that. When fights are close and they think that the fight is in the bag and they let their foot off the gas. No, Frank fought like a madman those last three rounds. Got a stoppage, got Artem to take a knee, damaged his left eye, you know, um, and was able to secure, secure the win. I scored a six rounds to six. Um, including the knockdown for Frank. So I had Frank winning by a point, you know, make uh, 114, 113 or whatever. I think that's the way I scored it, okay? Um, there were some rounds in there, there, maybe two or three of them that could have been swing rounds. You know, I know there was a round that I had Frank winning earlier that I gave to Artem because he had a stronger finish. It was just like one of those fights where I felt like in the first nine rounds, the reason why I gave Artem more rounds is because Artem was just more consistent every single round. Frank had his moments in almost every round. but And he was very accurate with the power shots. Very accurate. You saw it at the end. You know, every time Frank threw, you know, a lot of the times, half the time, he was landing those power shots. But the thing is, he wasn't letting his hands go enough consistently. And that's why I kept giving Artem more rounds, even though Frank was more cons uh, accurate. I mean, so... That's why I had it scored the way I scored. But, um, you know, Frank finished finished like a champ. You know what I mean? That's the way you're supposed to do it. You're going to have tough fights. I know he got a lot of criticism. I saw it on social media. People were like, oh, everybody else will beat him now. Devin, Shakur. You know, some of these fighters I thought he wouldn't, he wouldn't beat anyway. But, um, you know, this, this, the, the Keyshawn Davis name is the thing that is connected to Frank simply because Keyshawn is with Terrence Bud Crawford over there and Frank is signed to Errol Spence. So that's the reason why everyone likes to compare the two because it's not really about them. It's more about Bud and Spence. They don't really care about these two. It's, it, it, and I'm being real. I do, but I'm looking at the two as how they are, like as fighters. You know, I don't think Frank is the most technically sound guy, you know, but I do think he's very powerful and very fast and explosive. And once he gets very, you know, sometimes he gets really aggressive, but when he does, he gets it going. He's hard. He's hard to deal with. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and I think um, another thing with Frank, I think he needs to. You know, he fights a lot out of that, that he always keeps his guard up. You know, he's more of a blocker. He's not really a guy that has great head movement. You know what I mean? He does not have good head movement. You know, so I think he needs to keep that right hand up at all times. You know, he, he fights out of a high guard a lot. Um, There was a point when Artem started to slow down and he started to roll punches a little bit better and a little bit more. And I've seen that in, in other fights, too. I, I think he can fight that way and, and, and use that Philly shell a little bit um, because it, it, it creates more opportunities and, um, you know, with those short shots, with the with the counters. Um, I think he needs to do a little bit more of that. I don't think he feels completely comfortable with it, though. But it seemed like in the later rounds, it seemed like Frank started rolling some of the punches and countering with short, uh, short shots instead of relying – too much on the, the straight left hand or the um the right hook, you know what I mean? I think if he just fight out of the shell a little bit or improve that, where he can give you some more angles and give you more like of offensive opportunities, I think he'd be more of a complete fighter um, overall, right? But um, good win. Um, I, I think he won, you know, based on my scorecard. I have no problems with this. Um, I I felt like when I watched it the first time, when it was live, I started it late. But I saw the unofficial scorecards, 
And I looked at what everybody was saying on social media leading up. And it looked like everybody had Frank losing when I turned on the fight. So when I turned it on and saw those last three rounds, I was like, I don't know how people have it scored. But from what I'm seeing here, I'm I'm pretty sure Frank is going to secure the win. But when I rewatched it, I actually think he won barely. But some of those rounds were swing rounds too, you know. Um, I gave some close rounds to Artem. You know what I mean? A lot of the rounds were close. All right. So um, good win for Frank. I'm not really sweating like a tough fight because that's what happens when people do. Like, that's what people do. You know what I'm saying? You have a tough fight and people are all over you. I think Artem was just better than a lot of people expected. And I think Artem, when it comes to Keyshawn Davis, you know, I'm still unsure. I've, I've been on and I've been back and forth on how I feel like that fight would go if Frank were to fight Keyshawn. But I will tell you that I believe that Artem is better than anybody that Keyshawn has fought up to this point. You know, so even if you think Keyshawn would win, Keyshawn wouldn't be able to beat Artem like the way he's been beating like Anthony Yiga or, or, or Juan Carlos Burgos. Those guys are not better than Artem. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I think Keyshawn still has time. And I think that fight will happen at some point down the line. It will happen. All right. Um, I would have loved, I said to you guys, I would have loved for that fight to be on the undercard of Spencer Crawford since there's so much tension between the fans because that's what it's really about. It's not really about those two. It's really about the tension between Spencer and, and, and Crawford fans. But um, uh, I, I like, I like, I still like, you know, I think, I think Frank Martin definitely has his flaws for sure. But I still like him though. I like him. All right. Um, all right. And, and, and my last topic of the day, I just wanted to speak on Shakur and, and Haney and his situation. Um, so Shakur recently, you know, and this is one of the few videos I did before I, I, I took my little break. Shakur Stevenson uh, turned down the 25% purse that was offered to him from Devin Haney. Right. That's what we heard. Um, but recently, Shakur had petitioned uh, for a shot because he, he was the ranked guy at the WBC. And and we found out even earlier this afternoon that the WBO, he petitioned to get the Mando opportunity for the WBO and enforce the fight. Uh, the WBC has approved that and uh, Haney has by the 21st of this month. To decide whether or not he's going to defend his WBC title uh, against Shakur Stevenson. And now Shakur is even going after the WBO with their route. Because he was a WBC and a WBO champion back down at 130 before moving up. So he is, you know, right there to get those shot, title shots. And um, Haney has by Friday to decide what he's going to do. Um I really don't know what Haney is going to do. All I know is that whatever he decides is going to look as a, like a duck in some way. Because a lot of people are looking at it as Shakur is putting pressure on him. Right? But all of these options are not easy options. And I'm going to explain why. If he decides to fight Lomachenko in the rematch, let's say top rank comes out of nowhere and decides to offer Devin Haney a good amount of money to fight Lomachenko in a rematch. He's probably going to get stripped. You know what I mean? He's going to get stripped for a title. But, um, I mean, no one should complain if it's Lomachenko because 90% of you were saying Lomachenko, Lomachenko got robbed anyway, right? So if Haney were to decide to fight Lomachenko in a rematch, just to say, hypothetically, no one should have a problem with that, right? I don't think so. Um, if Lomachenko decides to fight Teofimo Lopez, who recently came back, and now he's reinstated as the WBO champ at 140, you know, after being Josh Taylor, he went on on his little fake retirement. We know he was faking. We all know he was faking. Um, but if he goes on to fight Teofimo Lopez at 140, that's not a duck. That's a phenomenal fight. In fact, Teofimo Lopez, as far as I'm concerned, he's the most decorated fighter out of all of these guys as far as resume. 
I mean, he has Josh Taylor and Lomachenko wins, clear wins on his resume. I think he has a better resume than all of these guys. If I'm keeping it real, whether you like him or not, Tiafima Lopez is not easy. Not only is he a good boxer, he's a phenomenal boxer, but he could knock you out. There was points in that Josh Taylor fight where I thought Josh Taylor was going to go to sleep. You know what I mean? Um, so you can't get mad at the Tiafimo Lopez fight if he doesn't fight Shakur. And then the Regis Progre fight. Now, I know Progre is coming off a not-so-good performance, all right, in a fight where I think he was knocked down. I think he, possibility, he lost that fight, you know. I um, think he got a gift win, you know, his first. Regardless, regardless, uh, that's not an easy fight neither because he's probably the hardest hitter out of all of the options for Devin Haney. You know, he's probably the hardest puncher. And Regis Progre, as his first opponent up at 140, that's a dangerous fight for Devin Haney. Stu got no easy options, you know, as far as it's the options that we've been hearing the most. You know, Tiafima Lopez, dangerous. Uh, Regis Progre, dangerous. Lomachenko rematch, still dangerous. <laughs> and Shakur Stevenson, dangerous because it's the hardest person to probably beat on points right now. Arguably. So, there's no real easy route. I don't know what Haney is going to do. Um, It really depends on whether or not he wants to stick around at 135 for longer. Um, I wasn't expecting Devin Haney to fight Shakur Stevenson at 140. You know, I mean, until, until 140 at least. Not at 135. Um, if, he does take, uh, if he does take Shakur, I'll be very surprised. You know, but I'm not expecting that. You know, I'm expecting, I'm expecting, I'm expecting Devin Haney to either fight Regis Progre or Vasil Lomachenko on a rematch. That's my prediction on his next opponent. I think he's going to fight one of those two before I see him fight in Tiafimo or Shakur Stevenson. I want to predict it be Lomachenko or Progre simply because Progre is coming off of a win that was very questionable against a relatively unknown fighter. And he's already got a win over Lomachenko. He already beat him. Um, even though most people feel like Loma won, I think the easier fight right now would to be fight one of those two out of those four that I've made. I think Tiafima Lopez and Shakur are the hardest, the harder fights right now. You know what I mean? Um, we just progress is like mid thirties. I think he's like thirty five right now. Oh, he's thirty four. I'm sorry. All right, so. Maybe he's starting to slip a little bit, or maybe he just fought a guy that was just a stylistic nightmare for him. You know, you guys got to always take in that in, into account. I say that a lot on here. Um, same thing with Frank Martin in his last fight. You know, these guys are going to just have Tiafimo Lopez had it against Sandor Martin. You know, some sometimes these fighters are just a, a stylistic nightmare for you know for certain fighters you know they might not necessarily be the best but they might be style wise horrible you know what i mean um so with that being said uh i think haney is gonna pick either pro gray or or uh you know what speaking of pro gray i did see something i did see something Progre said something about him being available. Uh, him not being available in October. Right? I think 
Devin Haney, he called out Devin Haney. Devin Haney replied, said, I'll be ready October. And then Regis Progray re- replied to him saying, you must have heard I'm not going to be available October. I want the fight in November. So there might be a little conflict there in scheduling. So if there is, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe he's not available, at least not for Haney's time. All right. Um, heard about Haney getting arrested. Uh, I think he got arrested with a gun. Uh, I didn't really read up on it. You know, I know that he bailed out already for like 35K. Um, you know, same like Wilder recently. I said, you know, these guys got to just be a little bit careful. I think Wilder is licensed to carry in his state or something. You guys just got to be a little bit more careful. You know, you don't want the hassle to deal with, you know, these 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 gun these gun arrest you know what i mean you don't want to deal with that uh, it might bite you in the ass you know if you are to get locked up at the wrong time all right so these guys got to get a little smarter with that hire the right security you know hire some off duty cops to to do your security for you so you don't have to worry about that you know what i mean stop getting caught with gun charges shit it's just, it's ridiculous man at this point these guys should know better you know what i mean just should know better I, i've said the same thing about these rappers for years they're getting caught up with guns and, and cars hire right the security making all that money you know if you're moving in a way that you feel like you need to be protected hire the security you know what i mean um or if you're in your own if you're at home get a license Get a license. All right. So anyway, um, I think I covered everything for the uh, lightweight division. All right. Um, let me just double check here. Yeah, I have everything covered. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, I'm out of here, man. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel. All right. And smash the like button if you like the content. Share the video on social media. And I'll see you guys on the next one. I've been doing film study on Inoue and Fulton. I'm going to have that done in a couple of days or within a couple of days. I got to do a little bit more. I've, I've changed my position. Um, so I want to see if I'm going to final. I'm going to stick by what I'm thinking in my mind now. All right. But anyway, I'm out of here. See you on the next one. Peace.